Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the matchless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the Word of Yahweh. Ladies and gentlemen, this has come out of her, my people, broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us. Um, we appreciate what Yahweh is doing in these end times. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Apostle Paul wrote in Romans uh, 1 and 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Mashiach, for it is the power of Elohim unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Hebrew first and also to the Greek, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart, ladies and gentlemen. We bring the truth raw and uncut. Now, if you love the truth raw and uncut, this is the broadcast for you. If you hate truth, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to listen uh, to this video, ladies and gentlemen. But we thank Yahweh uh, for you. And ladies and gentlemen, we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, we're going to get right into uh, our video on this day. Ladies and gentlemen, I have exposed Christianity and its origins in my videos. I have shared with my listening audience that Christianity first started in the 4th century B.C. by Ladies and gentlemen, Ptolemy Psalter, the Macedonian ruler of Egypt. Pagan Macedonians and Egyptians called themselves Christians beginning around 323 BC, not AD, 323 BC, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Christianity predates the birth of Yahoshua Mashiach by over 300 years, ladies and gentlemen. But Ptolemy Psalter subjects worship the Greco-Egyptian god Serapis, Christ, whom he created to unify the Macedonians and Egyptians. The god Serapis Christ worshipers called themselves Christians after the title Christ given to the Greco-Egyptian deity Serapis Christ. Then in the 4th century AD, Roman Emperor Constantine and his church of Rome bishops reinvented and reintroduced Christianity. Emperor Constantine and his bishop, bishops barred many of the practices and customs of the 4th century Christianity of Ptolemy Psalter, ruler of ancient Egypt. The 4th century BC Christians had a class of pagan bishops from Alexandria, Egypt, whom the Roman Catholic Church patterned their priesthood after. You can find all this, ladies and gentlemen, online. Much of the Roman Catholic priests, bishops, archbishops, cardinals, and popes garments and attire derived from Ptolemy Psalter's 4th century B.C. Christianity. Even the halos, sun raises, crosses, Egyptian arm, clergy hand gestures, the trinity, and other symbols practice and customs the Roman Catholics borrowed from Ptolemy Psalter, 4th century BC Christianity. Ladies and gentlemen, Roman Emperor Constantine and his bishops borrowed the image of Serapis Christ who resembled the supreme Greek 
deity, Zeus, and made him the image of the church of Rome, new God and savior, Jesus Christ. Roman Emperor Constantine and his bishops did the same identical thing that Ptolemy Psalter did to unify his empire. Ptolemy Psalter was a Macedonian who proclaimed himself ruler of Egypt in 323 BC. Ptolemy Psalter came up with a shrewd religious and political move to unify his Macedonian and Greek subjects. Ptolemy Psalter, with the help of his advisors, created a new Greco-Egyptian hybrid deity, Serapis Christ. Ptolemy Psalter and his advisors took two popular Egyptian deities, Apis and Osiris, and the most popular Greek deity, Zeus, and blended or fused these three deities together, creating Serapis Christ. Ptolemy Psalter and his advisors took the names Apis, Osiris, and Zeus to form the name Serapis. This shrewd political and religious move brought unity amongst Ptolemy, Macedonian, and Egyptian subjects. Therefore, Ptolemy sought to unify his empire, and shortly after he was proclaimed the second Macedonian pharaoh of Egypt after Alexander the Great. About 650 years later, Roman Emperor Constantine the Great was facing a similar dilemma that Ptolemy Psalter faced six and a half centuries before. Emperor Constantine wanted to unify his empire. He wanted to unify the Christians and the pagans in his empire. Therefore, he concocted a scheme to unify the Christians and pagans in the 4th century A.D. Constantine and his Church of Rome bishops and advisors adopted the Greco-Egyptian god Serapis Christ, who resembled the image of, of the supreme god Zeus as the image of the Church of Rome's new god, who they created, their savior, Jesus Christ. The Church of Rome, God, Jesus Christ, was not the true Hebrew Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. They are two different entities. Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ, later became Jesus Christ, and Yahoshua Mashiach are two separate entities. They're not the same person, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you believe that they are. They're not the same person. The Roman Catholic Church created a new God, separate from the Hebrew Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. Now, you, you must understand that because a lot of people believe they are the same. They are not the same, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. Now, the Church of Rome, God, Jesus Christ, was not the true Hebrew Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. Now, Paul said it in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. Let me read it to you. It's the book of 2 Corinthians, rather, and uh, chapter 11. Listen to what it says here in uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 4. Look what Paul said. For if he that come is preached another Messiah whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. See, there's another Messiah. There are other Messiahs. The Roman Catholic Church Messiah and Savior and God is not, ladies and gentlemen, Yahoshua Mashiach. It is, he is not the same Messiah and Savior, ladies and gentlemen, of the first century church. And he is not my Savior either. 
Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he is not my savior either, ladies and gentlemen. Roman Emperor Constantine and the majority of the Church of Rome bishops, listen, listen carefully, were white supremacists. They believed that the white race was divine and had the favor of the gods, plural, gods, and were superior to all other races. Therefore, they rejected the true Hebrew Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach, because he was a man of color. Constantine and his bishops believed that the Hebrew people were, inf were a inferior race, were an inferior race. If you know anything about geography and ancient history, you know that the land of Israel is a part of the continent of Africa. It is Northeast Africa. But when the oppressor, let me say that again because I want you to hear this carefully. But when the oppressor conquered that region of the world, he began calling Israel and that region of the world the Near East or Middle East. The oppressor changed the maps and history. Roman Emperor Constantine was able to unify the pagans and Christians and strengthen his empire. Zeus was one of the most popular gods in the Roman Empire in the 4th century AD. And Constantine knew this because one of the gods he worshipped was Zeus. So Constantine and his bishops created a god that the pagans would worship and embrace Christianity. They created Jesus Christ, a white god with lily white skin, blue eyes, and long blonde hair, wearing a Roman toga. Why did Constantine and his bishops call their new god Jesus? Because Jesus is a compound name i.e. translate to hell and s-u-s or s-o-u-s translates to Zeus therefore the name Jesus in which Jesus derived from <clears throat> translates to hell Zeus the pagans in Constantine Empire embraced Christianity by this shrewd move by Constantine and his Church of Rome bishops. The pagans in Constantine Empire already worshipped Zeus. But when Constantine and his bishops made the name of their new god, Jesus Christ, which translates to hell Zeus, the pagans in Constantine's empire flocked, flocked into the Christian church by the millions, ladies and gentlemen. Through this shrewd move, <coughs> Constantine grew the Christian church and unified his empire. The pagans and the Christians became one. The first century apostles and followers of Yahoshua, Mashiach, the true Messiah, never called themselves Christians. We have been deceived to believe that. We believe that they were Christians. The historians tell us they were Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, but this is not true. Nor did the early church embrace Christianity. 
I know the Bible says in Acts chapter 11 and 26, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very familiar with that scripture. But notice what it says. They were first called Christians. Who called them Christians? They did not call themselves Christians. They did not embrace Christianity. But they were called Christians by the unbelievers, by the heathens, by the world, ladies and gentlemen. But they did not call themselves Christians. This scripture is taken out of context, ladies and gentlemen. It is misinterpreted. <laughs> It says that they were first called Christians. It didn't say they called themselves Christians. It says they were first called Christians. They were first called Christians by the heathens, by, ladies and gentlemen, the unbelievers. The fate of the apostles and the first century disciples and the Christian fate are two different fates, ladies and gentlemen. They are not the same faith. Jude 3 tells us that we must earnestly contend for the faith, F-A-I-T-H, the faith that was once delivered to the saints. That faith <coughs> is not the Christian faith. Many of you believe it is. They are two different faiths. They're like um, oil and water. They're like night and day. The difference, the contrast between the two, ladies and gentlemen. The Christian faith and the true faith of our master Yahushua Mashiach are two different faiths. The Christian faith was created and invented by Roman Constantine, Roman Emperor Constantine, and his Church of Rome bishops. They are two different faiths. Ephesians 4 and 5 tell us there is one master, one faith, and one baptism. Not two faiths. One faith. There's only one faith, ladies and gentlemen. And that faith is not the Christian faith. Let's look at the Christian faith for a moment. Let's examine the Christian faith for a moment. The Christian faith don't keep the seventh day Sabbath. Ladies and gentlemen, they said that it's nailed to the cross. The Christian faith don't keep the dietary law. They eat swine, they eat hog, they eat shrimps, crabs. They eat all the abomination. Even medical science tell us that they won't take the word of Yahweh. Even medical science tell you that that stuff is bad for your health. You can get trichinosis disease by eating pork. Worms and parasites travel through your bloodstream, eat up your heart muscles, your brain, your liver, your kidneys, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why a lot of people got uh, dementia, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. This is why a lot of people have high blood pressure, diabetes, threatened strokes, ladies and gentlemen, glory to your heart disease, cancer, and other types of fatal diseases, ladies and gentlemen. Even crabs, crawfish, uh, shrimps, shellfish are full of sodium full of sodium, the, 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 the physician, the doctor would tell you you shouldn't eat that garbage. They're scavengers, ladies and catfish, scavengers, possums, raccoons, nutrients, muskrats. People eat this stuff, ladies, rabbits, a rat that hops, tree rats, uh, uh, squirrels. People eat this garbage. They eat... Uh, uh, pig chitlins, ladies and gentlemen. You see why people are sick as dogs. But many Christians believe that Yahweh nailed that to the cross, ladies and gentlemen, and he cleaned it. He didn't clean that abomination. And they take the scriptures that it's not what goes into a man that defiles 
a man, but it, what comes out of his heart. Now they take the scripture all out of context. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about eating clean food with unwashed hands. That, if you look at the context of that, ladies and gentlemen, it's talking about eating unclean food. <laughs> eating clean food, rather, with unwashed hands. Then they go to Acts chapter 10, the vision that Peter seen. And they say that Yahweh told Peter, rise, kill and eat, Peter. Peter said, I never ate anything that was common and unclean. But Yahweh said, what I clean, call not that common and unclean. But then Peter thought on the uh, uh, vision. He, he, he didn't have understanding. And Yahweh revealed to him, go read Acts 10 and 28. I don't care what Geno Jennings and these other people tell you. Read Acts 10 and 28. Peter said, Yahweh have showed me that I should call no man common or unclean. So Yahweh showed him these animals, these fowls of the air symb in, in symbolic form, ladies and gentlemen. It was a metaphor. Amen. Th these, it was symbolic. Amen. And it was um, revealing the Gentiles. Ladies and gentlemen, the interpretation was the Gentile. Because Gentile were considered dogs, unclean people. And, and Hebrew people did not even associate with them. They didn't even eat with these people because they were considered trash, dogs, swines, ladies and gentlemen. Even the Hebrews had no dealings, ladies and gentlemen, with the Samaritans, glory to y'all. They were self-righteous, uh, high-minded, proud, sanctimonious, ladies and gentlemen, holier than thou, self-righteous people, glory to Yahweh. So the Christian faith and the true faith are two different faith. R R Roman Emperor Constantine Christian faith is totally different from the true faith. Now think about this. If Roman Emperor Constantine, Constantine converted to Christianity, what that tell you about Christianity? This man was, he worshiped many gods, especially Sol Invictus, the sun god. That's why they changed uh, the true Seventh day Sabbath to Sunday. That's what the, uh, the Roman Catholic Church officially changed, ladies and gentlemen. The fourth commandment remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy to the first day of the week, Sunday, in honor of Sol Invictus, the ancient Roman sun god. Ladies and gentlemen, there's so much I can say. <laughs> so much I can say. Ladies and gentlemen, Christians don't keep the commandments of Yahweh. Christians observe pagan holidays. Christian women preach. Christian women dress like harlots, like hookers, strippers. Christian women have no stand. Christian men wear braids and long hair. They have no standard whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. Christian people uh, listen to secular music, go to clubs, dance, twerk. Get high, do everything that the world do, fornicate, shack up, cohabitate, ladies and gentlemen. They're homosexual, Christian homosexuals, sodomites. Glory to Yahweh, amen, for the truth. So the Christian faith is totally different than the faith of the first century church. They kept the Seventh-day Sabbath. The first century church kept the Seventh-day Sabbath. J Jews, Hebrews, and Gentiles, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. They kept the dietary law. They didn't even tithe. Tithing was not money, cash. Geno Jennings tithe and all these other so-called preachers tithe. The ones say they're the true men of Yahweh. They tithe, ladies and gentlemen. They tithe. They condone tithe. And they receive tithing. Tithing in the Old Covenant was only agriculture and livestock. It wasn't money. And they tied 20 to 30 percent of their substance in a year, ladies and gentlemen. But the first century church, 
the true church, Yahushua said in Matthew 16 and 18, upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ladies and gentlemen, that church did not tithe. They didn't celebrate pagan holidays. Christians are involved in fraternities, sororities, Freemasons, uh, <laughs> Eastern stars, seek, all, different secret societies, and all kind of foolishness, lady Christians. But the apostles never did this foolishness. They didn't embrace women preachers. Paul said in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11, let your women keep silence in the church. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Let your women learn in silence with all subjection. Then in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33, it says that Yahweh is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches. Let your women keep silence in the church, for it's not permitted for them to speak in the church, for they are commanded to be on obedience, also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul said, if any man seem to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of Yahweh. Yahushua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why call me master, master, and do not the things which I say. So Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. I kept the faith. Ladies and gentlemen, he didn't keep religion. He didn't keep Christianity. He kept the one and only faith. Ladies and gentlemen. Now, as I close this broadcast, I want to say this. All the tares shall remain in the Christian church. It's the truth. We're in the end times, ladies and gentlemen. Yahweh is calling for his people to come out of the Christian church. Christian church is not of Yahweh. Y'all can see all the sex scandals, drug scandals with the pastors, embezzling money, ladies and gentlemen, money laundering, Tra uh, sex trafficking in the church every time you turn around th these fake ladies and gentlemen pastors hypocrites uh, homosexual relationships look at Jake's hanging out with P. Diddy every time you turn around a pastor that preached against homosexuality find out he's a homosexual ladies and gentlemen uh, and then they're embracing same sex marriages in the church you got pastor, men, male pastors with their husbands and wives, male husbands and wives in the church. Vice versa with the women. Oh, the, Christianity is garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just garbage. It's garbage. Garbage. It's amazing. Now, he said he's going to let the wheat and tear grow together. He said, don't you try to separate them, just let them grow. In the end time, in the last day, I'm gonna send my angels and he gonna divide the wheat from the tail. He gonna take the tear and he gonna bind them up in bundles and he's gonna burn them. That's all these Christians that will not hearken unto the voice of Almighty Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen. Through your traditions, you have made the word of Yahweh a non effect. In vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of man. You honor me with your mouth. You, uh, with your uh, mouth. You draw unto me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. That's what Yahushua said, ladies and gentlemen. That's the sh condition of the Christian church. All this buff buffoonery and clownery is terrible. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see right through it that Yahweh did not have anything to do with the Christian church. The Christian church hijacked the true faith. And the historians lie to you and they tell you that uh, the apostles <coughs> and the disciples of Yahushua were Christians. They were not Christians. They lied to us. The Bible says in Revelation 12 and 9 that 
Satan have to see the whole world. Revelation 12 and 11 and 12. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their life unto the death. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. For he knows he has but a short time. <clears throat> All the tales shall remain in the Christian church. If you can't hear this kind of preaching, it's because you're a tale. You're just not chosen. Yahushua said many are called, but a few are chosen. The Bible tells us in <clears throat> Acts 13 and 48, they that were ordained to eternal life believe. Many of you just ain't ordained to eternal life. That's why it's hard for you to accept what I'm teaching. I'm teaching truth. <clears throat> you're just not chosen. You haven't been chosen in him before the foundation of the world. You're a vessel of wrath fitted to destruction. Mm -hmm. But thank Yahweh for the vessels of glory, the vessels of mercy. Thank Yahweh that I'm one of those vessels of mercies, ladies and gentlemen. But many are called, but a few are chosen. Look what Yahushua said. He said, fear not, little flock. For it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. A little flock. Matthew uh, 7 verses 14. Broad is the way and wide is the gate. That leads to destruction. And many will go therein. Ladies and gentlemen. All the tales shall remain in the Christian church. The wheat or the chosen is coming out of the Christian faith coming out of the Christian faith or religion. They're coming out. The wheat or the chosen are coming out of the Christian faith. The wheat coming out. The, you can't remain in there. The Bible says that Yahweh is going to thoroughly purge his floor. His fan is in, is in his hand. Ladies and gentlemen, and he's going to gather the wheat into his garners, his barns. But the shaft he's going to burn with unquenchable fire. Those are Christians. The Bible says in Matthew 13 concerning the parable of the tares, the wicked one sold the tares. The wicked one have sold Christianity. Christianity have been sold by the wicked one, by Satan. And Satan's children will remain in Christianity. Listen, I used to be a Christian for many years, but I didn't stay in. Yahweh brought me out. And some of you that are listening to me, you're not going to be a Christian long. You're coming out of the Christian religion, the Christian faith. You're coming out. Yahweh's going to enlighten you, open your eyes as he opened other people's eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, John 16 and 13, when he, the spirit of truth, come, he will guide you into all truth. He's going to guide you. Romans 8 and 14, for many that are led by the spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. He's going to lead you. Sometimes Yahweh will lead you through these false ministries just to get some truth. Because, you, you know, these false ministries, <clears throat> everything they teach is not wrong. Uh, Gino Jennings preached truth, some truth. Everything he don't preach is wrong. He preached many things as wrong, but everything he <coughs> preaches is not wrong. So you can get something even from General Jennings. You can get some. You got something from the Baptist Church. Some y'all got something from the Pentecostals, the, the the Jehovah Witness, whatever. You it was something there you got that was good, but Yahweh led you on. Many times we, we, we get involved in ministries and we think Yahweh put us there to stay. No, he didn't put you there to stay. He puts you there to get what you need in that place and move you on, ladies and gentlemen, to more truth. And Yahweh brought me out of the Christian church. I went through stages until I came out of her. I came out of Babylon. Ladies and gentlemen, and so Revelation 18 and 4 said, come out of her, my people, that you be not partake of her sin, that you receive not of her plague. <clears throat> Yahweh's people, the wheat is coming out. 
My sheep hear my voice and a the stranger they will not follow. Yahweh's sheep, his lambs, they coming out. They can hear. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. But many of you can't hear. Your ears you have shut. Your eyes you have closed. Ladies and gentlemen, and you can't hear. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. You don't believe. That's why you're blind. That's why you're delusional. You're blind. And the scriptures say because they have not a love for the truth, Yahweh will send them a strong delusion that they will believe a lie and be damned. Because you don't love truth, Yahweh will send you a strong delusion. Ladies, and many already have the strong delusion. There's nothing you can do. Once Yahweh give you the strong delusion, you're reprobate. Your conscience has been sealed with hot iron. You've been turned over. There's nothing you can do. You can't repent. You can't even come back to your senses once Yahweh send you a strong delusion. So the Bible says in Revelation 18 and 4, come out of her, my people. Yahweh's sheep is hearing his voice. Come out of her, my people. My sheep hear my voice and the stranger they won't follow. His sheep is hearing his voice. Come out. They're coming out. They're coming out. Boom. It's not many of us. It's not many. But we're coming out. We're coming out. You listen, look at my comment section. You can see what Yahweh is doing. Just look at my comment section. I thank Yahweh for those that want to be baptized over in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Got another one just today. Want to be rebaptized in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, ladies and gentlemen. This word is getting out. The Bible says you cannot do nothing against the truth but for the truth. He said, my word that goes out of my mouth shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing that I sent it. Yahweh hasten over his word to perform it. He's not a man that he shall lie. Neither is he the son of man that he shall repent. Yahweh backs up his word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot or tittle of Yahweh's word shall fail. Why? Because the Bible says in Psalms 119 and 87, Yahweh's word is forever settled in the heavens, ladies and gentlemen. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partake of her sin, that you receive not of her plague. And I'm going to close here in Daniel 12 and 4. The Bible says in the end times, it says, man shall go to and fro in the earth and knowledge shall be increased. This is true, ladies and gentlemen. People going to and fro on the earth, how? By means of cell phones, uh, smartphones and computers. Just by tap of a, a button, you can go everywhere in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Man gonna go to and fro in the earth looking for knowledge, doing research. Yahweh's people. And knowledge shall be increased. Spiritual knowledge, not just secular knowledge or technology, but spiritual knowledge is going to be increased. It's being increased. Look at this knowledge I'm bringing to you. Some of y'all never heard it before. You never been challenged like this before because most of the pastors you sitting under, they traditional, apostolic, Amen. Set in their ways. They ain't changing. That old apostolic message. They ain't changing. Yahweh's giving more revelation. But they won't let it go. God, Yahweh, the, 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 the knowledge that these men had a hundred years ago, Yahweh is revealing much more knowledge than that, ladies and gentlemen. But they won't hold, they hold on to them, them apostolic uh, tradition, which they call it holiness. You still apostolic. You apostolic. You can play with words all you want to. You apostolic or Pentecostal. You believe the same message. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. But tradition is a terrible thing. What the Bible says in Colossians 2 and 8, let no man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the traditions of men in the rudiments of this world and not at the Mashiach. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again. We would really appreciate if you like, share, and subscribe. We thank Yahweh for all our friends. We're praying for you, those that uh, request prayer. 
uh, those that, uh, amen, uh, are being blessed through this broadcast, and we appreciate every one of you, those that have been enlightened. And we're, we, we're so grateful because we know that our labor is not in vain. The Bible tells us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh, for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in Yahweh. Well, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Shalom. Shalom.